Hello everyone and welcome back. So today our video is about endodontic diagnosis. To be more specific, it's going to talk about pulpal and periapical diagnosis. Now, why we think this video is very important is because this video talks about the correct terminologies you use for diagnosis of radiographs. During your interviews and bench exams, you will be given case studies or simply radiographs to evaluate. When that happens, you need to know the correct terms to use in your diagnosis. And this is all that this video is about. We have referred to a few cases and tried to interpret them and tell you how the correct interpretation has to be done. We have also linked in the description box below a few free resources for you to enhance your concept on this topic. Apart from that, we at Capit Simplified have this entire radiographic interpretation course that you can enroll in to get full benefit out of this video. Stay tuned and let's start with case number one. So over here, we have a mandibular right first molar which is hypersensitive to cold and sweets over the past few months but the symptoms have subsided now now there is no response to thermal testing and there is tenderness to biting and pain to percussion radiographically there are diffuse radio opacities around the root apex so what are the important points we have to note it was hypersensitive to cold and sweets, but now the symptoms have subsided. There is no response to thermal testing. However, there is tenderness to biting and pain on percussion. Radiographically, there are diffuse radio opacities that can be seen uh, across uh, around the root apices. So what is the diagnosis here? Pulp necrosis. So why would we say pulp necrosis? No response to thermal testing along with symptomatic apical periodontitis. Now, why would we say this? Because there is tenderness to biting and pain to percussion. With condensing ostitis, this is because of the radio opacities that we see around the root apices. What is the treatment? Non-surgical endodontic treatment or root canal treatment is indicated, followed by a buildup and a crown. Over time, the condensing ostitis should regress partially or totally. So anytime we have an infection which has reached the periapical areas or even when it is an irreversible pulpitis, we always go ahead with the endodontic treatment followed by a restoration. Now a restoration cannot be assessed by the radiograph we have to look at it clinically to see the amount of tooth structure remaining the biologic width the ferrule after all the clinical examinations we can decide whether we need a crown whether we need a post and core or anything else which is why a restoration would have been a better word here um, and yeah over time the infection is going to regress Coming to case two, so over here, following the placement of a full gold crown on the maxillary right second molar, how do we say it's a full gold crown? It's very radio opaque. Our PFMs or our all ceramic crowns will not be so radio opaque. So following the placement of a full gold crown on a maxillary right second molar, the patient complains of sensitivity to both hot and cold liquids. Now the discomfort is spontaneous. So this rules out reversible pulpitis. Upon application of endo eyes on this tooth, the patient experiences pain and upon removal of the stimulus, the discomfort is lingered for 12 seconds. So endo ice is used for cold testing and the patient is experiencing pain. And when you remove the stimulus, it is lingering pain of 12 seconds. So this again rules out reversible pulpitis where there would not be any pain after the stimulus is removed and it would definitely not linger for this long. Responses to both percussion and palpation were normal. 
which means that it has not gone till the periapical area and radiographically there was no evidence of any osseous changes so that we we don't have anything which is present periapically so what is the diagnosis the diagnosis would be symptomatic irreversible pulpitis symptomatic because the patient is coming with symptoms and irreversible pulpitis because everything that we read is against reversible pulpitis so it's an irreversible pulpitis and we have normal apical tissues now non-surgical endodontic treatment is indicated and uh, access is to be repaired with a permanent restoration so because it is an irreversible pulpitis we need to do a root canal treatment and we can go ahead and do it from this restoration itself without taking out the crown and the area that we have cut out can be repaired with a permanent restoration there's a small note regarding this case that note that the maxillary second premolar over here has severe distal caries following evaluation the tooth was diagnosed with symptomatic irreversible pulpitis that is hypersensitive to cold lingering eight seconds and symptomatic apical periodontitis there was also pain to percussion which is why the diagnosis is symptomatic apical periodontitis now coming to case three we have a maxillary left first molar has occlusal mesial caries and the patient has been complaining of sensitivity to sweets and to cold foods cool, cold liquids there is no discomfort to biting or percussion so this means that no apical changes the tooth is hyper responsive to endo eyes but with no lingering pain so this is indicative of a reversible pulpitis since there is no lingering pain but the hyper responsiveness distinguishes it from a normal pulp therefore it is a reversible pulpitis and because there are no changes in the periapex we say normal apical tissues now what would the treatment be here it would be excavation of the caries followed by placement of a permanent restoration if the pulp is exposed treatment would be non-surgical endodontic treatment followed by a permanent restoration such as the crown so because radiographically we can see that the caries is quite deep we have to do an excavation and evaluation all symptoms point towards a reversible pulpitis but it's always uh, it's always good to expect that when you are treating this clinically and taking out all the caries you might see that the pulp is getting exposed and the treatment plan might change at that point or in the future. Coming to the next case, over here we have the mandibular right lateral incisor has an apical radiolucency that was discovered during a routine examination. There was a history of trauma more than 10 years ago and the tooth was slightly discolored so this again is a characteristic finding of a non-vital tooth the discoloration of a tooth is a characteristic finding of a non-vital tooth now the tooth did not respond to endo eyes or to EPT this again shows that it's pulp necrosis now the adjacent teeth responded normally there was no tenderness to percussion or palpation in the region so we definitely know it's pulp necrosis but we do see some amount of radiolucency so it has to be apical periodontitis now whether it's symptomatic or asymptomatic is depending on this so there is no tenderness to percussion or palpation which is why it is asymptomatic apical periodontitis now what is the treatment here it is non-surgical endodontic treatment followed by bleaching and a permanent restoration so bleaching because we know that there was some amount of discoloration and we might have to put a crown as well or a permanent restoration in the form of a composite coming to the next case over here we have a mandibular left first molar demonstrates a relatively large apical radiolucency encompassing both the mesial and distal roots along with focal 
involvement so this is the radiolucency involving both the roots and there is furcation involvement as well periodontal probing depths were all within normal limits the tooth did not respond to thermal cold testing and both percussion and palpation elicited normal responses now there was a draining sinus tract on the midfacial of the attached gingiva which was traced with a gutta percha cone so clinically they saw that there was a draining sinus tract which was traced with a gutta percha cone there was a recurrent caries around the distal margin of the crown so we see some amount of recurrent caries over here underneath the crown now what would be the diagnosis be here it would again be pulp necrosis why because the tooth did not respond to thermal cold testing and both percussion and palpation elicited normal responses even if this information was not given any time there is an abscess that is confirmed it will have a pulp necrosis situation and also another thing i wanted to point out is this statement periodontal probing depths were all within normal limits so why is this statement important here because this kind of an appearance can also be there due to a periodontal disease so just to rule that out the author has given us this information now what is the treatment here it is crown removal non-surgical endodontic treatment and placement of a new crown so generally um, so you can do it either ways you so over here it's a pfm crown so if you think it's possible to go through it's generally hard to get the access from a pfm crowns uh, so you might have to remove the crown uh, treat the tooth for a root canal and then put a new crown coming to case number six maxillary left first molar was endodontically treated more than 10 years ago the patient is complaining of pain to biting over the past three months there appears to be a pical radiolucencies around all three roots so this is the tooth we're talking about it has been root canal treated there is a pical radiolucency at the peri apex of all three roots the tooth was tender to both percussion and to the tooth sleuth so that means a pical periodontitis is guaranteed since we know that there is um, symptoms so symptomatic apical periodontitis is guaranteed now diagnosis would be previously treated and then symptomatic apical periodontitis another thing i would want to mention here which is not written is because they've said tooth sleuth we can suspect that apart from this being a problem that the root canal has not been done like you can see it's under obturated and infection might have record there could also be that there is some crack um, um, in normal teeth so how, how do you not get confused here so if there is a reaction to a tooth sleuth in a normal tooth which has not been root canal treated that means it's a living tooth so then we would suspect a cracked tooth however over here we know that it is a root canal treated tooth so it is not it is a dead tooth so over here this does not have a lot of significance it just points out towards this being a symptomatic apical periodontitis coming to case 7 a maxillary left lateral incisor exhibits an apical radiolucency there is no history of pain and the tooth is asymptomatic so it's asymptomatic now there is no response to endo eyes or to the EPT that means it's pulp necrosis whereas the adjacent teeth normally respond to both the tests there is no tenderness to percussion or palpation so no there, there are no symptoms and but we see some lesions so it's asymptomatic uh, asymptomatic apical periodontitis and pulp necrosis like we mentioned so what is the treatment again anytime it is irreversible pulpitis or apical periodontitis or abscess it is always a non-surgical endodontic treatment and placement of a permanent restoration